Hi all, Mark here with the Exiles. I hope you're safe and well. In this instructional, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, a couple of the Abritsari plays, so the unarmed grappling plays, um, and we're going to specifically look at the first and second play of Abritsari and a couple of different ways to get into that play. We're also going to look at Gambarola, which is uh, which is um, a, a play I'll, I'll, I'll talk about. And then what we'll do is we'll look at a couple of close plays with sword in two hands. Um, it's a very cold winter's day today. It's extremely windy at times, so um, I've done my best to protect my microphone and camera from the wind. Um, and as such, uh, unlike the previous instructionals, the first bunch of instructionals where I was taking my camera and showing you different parts of the manuscript and then we are practicing those actions, uh, I'm going to have to hold up the manuscript to, to my camera, um, which um, which you'll have to bear with uh, I'm afraid and, and also the wind noise as well I think I've just shot a video and it's okay with the wind but at times it gets a bit gusty so again lockdown and all the rest of it um, you, we, you, we don't have much of a, a, a choice um, at the moment so uh, let's get into some Abritsari and uh, uh, see how we get on. Um, again, the idea of these instructionals is to give people some things to think about while they're at home in potentially in isolation um, and, uh, you know, to, 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 to walk through. Um, if you live with someone you can train with, then that makes it even easier. But the idea is I'm choosing things that people can either just watch or you can pause the video and just kind of repeat along to. Um, and I'm trying to throw in um, sort of instructional based theory as opposed to just, you know, copy and repeat, copy and repeat. Um, so Abritsari first then. Let's take a look at the play from the manuscript and then we'll get into uh, a couple of different ways to access, access that play. Okay, so the first technique we'll look at today uh, predominantly is the, is the second play of Abritsari. Okay, what you can see here um, is a follow on from the first play where the person has made uh, a high grab around the neck. Uh, and they've looked to shoot the right arm in towards the hip, okay? What you're doing is you're denying access to your hip and you're dealing with this arm high. Super key to understand, this could have happened after a bunch of strikes. It could have happened just as, as something that split out of already being in that grappling distance. There may have been an exchange or a series of exchanges already. There's other videos on the channel where I talk about the context of Fury's Abritsari uh, and the fact that it's a system designed for just purely, you know, operating unarmed, but it's also there to support things like dagger, sword work, etc. It's a holistic system, okay? I won't be too exhaustive because um, I've done other videos on that in the past. With the second play, which is a full on of the first, once you've uh, decided that you're going to uh, deal with this high arm, this is one of the plays you can do with that high arm. The super important thing to understand about this play is this action can manifest itself in lots of different ways, okay? In this instance, you've just taken the high arm because it's there. You can get to this action from taking a low arm as well. So if the person's coming with a low grab or a double low, you can do that action from a low grab. You can do it um, from grappling distance, so where you're already body to body, you can snake up onto the arm. You can also do it as a predetermined action from stopping a strike, doing a cover, and that's what we're going to explore right now. So the second play is what we'll look at first, and then what we'll look at after is the tenth play, okay, which Fury calls the Gambarola. Sorry, I'm, I appreciate I'm quite far away, uh, which, uh, which uh, Fury calls the Gambarola. So this is a common type of action, in, in, even in modern martial arts, where basically you're looking to throw the person um, backwards uh, by tripping their by tripping their legs. So second play first, a bit closer to camera, and then and then the the tenth play as we number them. Okay. So uh, there's other videos where I've done workshops and stuff where we look at entering into this this second play, this high bind slash dislocation slash throw because it's all of those things. Contextually, this is really important. Fury says his Abritsari is for uh, sport and anger, okay? This is really important to bear in mind. All of the plays work exactly the same, whether or not you're trying to really damage your opponent or whether or not you're trying, or whether you're applying them in a sporting context. And a sporting context, I mean, of the period, okay? And there's examples of people having tests of strength with just ra grappling, no strikes, and so on and so forth. Anyway, it's a big topic, so there's a lot to say about it. We're going to skip past the traditional setup, which is, um, the person, I'll do it to, to this side, you can do it on both sides of your body, I'll do it to this side for camera, where the opponent has grabbed high on my neck uh, and I have stopped that low arm from, from controlling my hip, I come up onto their arm and I basically just look to bind that arm with a step across my body to basically uh, hyperextend slash dislocate their arm. The reason why I say break, dislocate and throw quite often is because it's all of those things, okay? I've, I've, I've come up against the arm, 
I've, I've sort of started to straighten that arm, so their arm is between my arm and on my neck, so I'll come up against the back of the elbow, I'll roll over the top and secure a nice strong grip, and the reason why it's a break slash throw, dislocate and all those things is because yes, I'm trying to break the arm if I'm doing it in anger, but I'm also concluding that with this action, which is a throw to ground, okay, and that's why it's, it's kind of all of those things. So instead of accessing this in a traditional way, and again, there's other videos on that. So first play of adversary, right? We, in training, we set out like this. The guy's gonna reach for the neck, and he's gonna reach for the hip, and this is, this is first play, right? I'm denying this access. This is how we do it in training, okay? In reality, for a more combative approach to an arm, there's no way a guy is gonna step in like that and just grab hold of you, because you're gonna punch him in the face, or whatever. Okay, but in training, this is absolutely fine as a setup. It comes a high low, and what I'm doing is I'm denying, I'm denying this control of the hips. 90% of wrestling, upright wrestling, is all about control of the hips and the shoulders. Okay, and then you destabilize the feet. Control the hips, control the shoulders, destabilize the feet. I've missed this, I've gotten this. Okay, and that's where the first play comes, which we're gonna drill in a second. In training, what we were just doing there is sometimes that was missed. That's okay. We've got to play for that, okay? But the point is, in training, you're shooting and I'm just stopping this. Doesn't matter which side is just stopping this, but please do bear in mind that in reality, we'll be moving through our posture, we'll be grabbing, and it's look, and what happens is then I deny that. And that's actually a pretty realistic way to do it. If we're both resting around and you've got control of my neck, I'm denying this, and that's where the play comes in. You understand? Setting it up just like that is obviously rubbish. We'll access it from a couple of different ways, okay? Now, it helps if you practice this play, um, you know, in training, in your own clubs or in our club, if you're a member, um, so that you have a bit of a, you already have some, some knowledge of how to do this play. Again, I'm doing this because people have asked for it, okay? So this might not carry over too well to video and practice in solo, but we'll, we'll give it a try. Okay, so the first way we'll get into it is one of my favorite ways, which is breaking distance with Dented Ishingali, okay? One of our unarmed posta. And again, I'll throw in the pop-out banner um, a video going back to what those posture are for and, and why they look a bit strange, but why they're perfectly functional um, when you think about upright grappling, okay? So, uh, I could be imported a ferro or a completely unassuming position or whatever. My opponent could have reached forward, in this case with their right hand, so they are either reaching forward with their right hand or they are striking with their right hand, it doesn't matter. Either way, it's an extended arm, okay, which means that they need to have started quite far back, okay, just on the edge of distance, okay. What I'm going to do from, let's say, Porto de Ferro is I'm going to come forward with Dente de Chingali, okay, and I'm going to come very aggressively forward. All of this stuff is very messy, very clunky, very aggressive, that's unarmed fighting. When I do this action, I'm looking to come forward with force with my forearm and elbow into my opponent's right shoulder. Okay, so I'm coming onto the inside. As they're striking or grabbing at me, I'm looking to close against their, the inside of their arm, against their shoulder with my, uh, with my dented Ichingali, which in itself is quite an aggressive action. Okay? So I'm coming forward like that. Ichingali to make a cover. There's a strike, there's a hold. I'm breaking distance right up close to my opponent with that front foot movement as well. So I'm coming in like that. I'm tucking my chin in, okay? I'm getting the rear arm ready for strikes or, or, or holds or whatever. Um, and I'm, I'm very aggressively coming forward with this action. From here, what we'll find, hopefully, is that my opponent's arm is on the outside, okay, but it's straight. If it's not straight, as I start the wrap, I'll do another action. But if it is straight, what I'm looking to do, come on the inside, snake underneath and around to the outside, okay? And I'm looking to lock their arm between my neck and my arm, okay? So their arm is straight, my head is here, and I'm on the outside. So I'm looking to straighten their arm and lock that in place in and around okay from here i'm going to basically apply a lot of pressure against their arm and i'm going to drop my arm across the top the reason why i do that is because it traps their arm okay and hopefully what it does whether they've punched or grabbed is it rotates their elbow so that their elbow is up okay and again if that doesn't work i've got other plays for that okay namely the next play in the sequence so I'm coming forward and I'm wrapping this up, okay? As I've wrapped it up, I'm coming over the top, okay? And hopefully their arm is now between my arm and my neck. And from here, I'm making a grip and I'm just turning it, okay? I'm just turning. I'm looking to hyperextend their elbow 
and throw them over. So that's kind of entry number one, over the top and roll, okay? And this, this action of the feet is really important because what I don't want to do is allow my opponent any time to escape. So by, by closing Chingali, wrapping up, okay, folding it over, grabbing hold, by throwing this leg across my own hip, it basically takes them down and across, okay? Which means that their chances of escape is very slim, all right? And that's the reason why this sort of peculiar foot action in the manuscript is there, okay? It's to increase your chances of success. So there we go, underneath and over the top, okay? Now in motion, that might be quite a messy, clunky thing, okay? You might have to uh, rearrange your feet, you might have to make some additional increases of the front foot to position your opponent. And this is something that, with a lot of practice over time, you start instinctively doing, okay? And this is something I've mentioned in previous videos where whenever I do this kind of action, this kind of high bind slash throwy action, uh, quite often what I'll do is I'll make a second decrease offline. So I'll cover like this, but then as I start the bind, I'll make another decrease. That is something that just seems to work for me. Um, but you know, you'll find your own way when you can do this with a partner if you can't already. So that's entry number one, okay? And you can do that on both sides as well. So I can, I can come in this side and do the same action. Again, if we're looking to take whatever we're doing in isolation back to training, that action is definitely worth a lot of practice, okay? Because the bind itself, as I've said already, you can find that in lots of different ways. So for example, we're doing Chingali at the moment, we'll do another action in a second, okay? But let's say my opponent is already grappling with me, we're close, we're grappling, whatever, and they are, they are low with both their hands and they're trying to control my hips, okay? I can do this same action from a low grab as well, okay? So if we're striking or covering or whatever, they've got a double low grip, I can come underneath the arm with my crease, and I can snap that up onto my neck and do the same action. So it's definitely worth a lot of practice of this kind of high wrap and twist type motion, okay? The next way we'll get into this um, is from Posta Longa. So it's a very similar setup, but rather than committing my whole body to a line, um, I'm gonna do it with Posta Longa. Now, Posta Longa is a grab, it's a strike, it's a, it's a hold, it's a push. Um, it's something I can do at distance and weight behind, like a fence, like a modern martial artist. Like a, you know, you call that a fence. Um, it's lots of different things, okay? In this instance, what I'm gonna use it for is to basically um, sort of stunt my opponent's strike. So if they're a little bit closer and they are throwing a, you know, off the right, right shoulder, a strike, um, I can use Posse Longa in against their shoulder, like that, to basically stop the power of that strike. It's not going to stop the arm coming forward, but what it's going to do is, as they're throwing their strike, or their aggressive grab, it's going to stop them bringing that arm forward with a lot of power, okay? And all I'm looking to do is disrupt them enough to close distance a little bit more and to apply this play. I've stolen the inside line with my posture longer to come in at the shoulder or to come in at the head to close distance to start grappling. So I could be low, I could be in posture frontale, perhaps we've exchanged a couple of strikes, made a few covers, whatever. They throw in the big strike and I'm just shooting forward into posture longer with my left hand against their right shoulder, okay? But you can do it on both sides. Um, so yeah, you know, let's do it from posture frontale. So we're here. Yeah, exchanging whatever, moving around, they throw the strike, I come in against the shoulder, okay? Imagination is important, as always, with these things. Once I've done that, well then we've just done the play, I wrap underneath, onto the arm, and I go over the top, okay? So we're here, stunting the strike, little increase again if it helps, round and onto the arm, and we're rolling over. Okay, moving, strike, onto the arm, and roll. And it's worth just trying to practice that action again, just to make it as smooth as possible. But bear in mind, it's going to be, as I say, messy, clunky. You might take a couple of strikes while you're doing it. That is just, I always make the joke, that's why I'm so ugly, but that is, that is just unarmed fighting, okay? Uh, Porto de Ferro this time, okay? Cross the longer, there's the wrap, there's the throw. And it's fast, it's really fast, okay? So that's from Posta Longa. The next one we'll do is from Posta Frontale, okay? 
uh, these covers are all on the inside of my opponent, so I'm, I'm working on the premise of coming onto the inside of their of their arm, their right arm in this instance. So from Posta Longa, uh, sorry, Posta Frontale, I could be there already. I could be in Porta de Ferro. I could be in another Posta. Let's say I'm really super close though. Okay, so we're basically inside of each other's distance. We may have exchanged a couple of strikes already. Whatever. Okay. So let's say I'm in Chingali, okay, and I'm on the inside of my opponent's arms. What I can do to got to basically start setting this play up again, if we're really close, is give myself a bit of space, okay? So if their arms are high and I'm in Chingali, okay, I can push into Posta Frontali to basically make break the space again. So move them back a little bit with that strike, either to the head and body or to the chest or to the head. Um, to basically move them back a little bit. To then find their arm, wherever it might be, okay? It might not be high, it might be, you know, sort of mid-high, it might even be low, but I'm making the space to find the arm to then drop it on, okay? It's definitely worth a practice of that as well. It's worth a practice of all of these things, but multiple setups into this play. Chingali, okay? into frontale find the arm and over we go okay and obviously i'm exaggerating that twist around you know for for, for the purposes of the video uh moving 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 and then frontale onto the arm and over the reason why that's the second play but it's the first big action is really super key because that action is devastating if you catch someone's arm like that from wherever you pick it up from low and right low and left high and high and right high and left from a strike from a grab from a hold um you know again if they're holding on to you like this or whatever you can pick up an arm and do that action if you get it right it's, it's absolutely devastatingly effective today as much as it was then you won't see an action like this in things like ufc and stuff because the risk of hyperextending or breaking your opponent's elbow is super high, okay? So it's uh, it's definitely a play designed for real intention and, and proper use. So from those three setups, on your own or with a partner, if you're lucky enough to train with one at home during this COVID time, um, you know, practice different setups. I've given you three, but you can do it from everywhere. Double low grab, double high grab, from multiple strikes of multiple arms, um, sorry, off of both sides. And all you're looking for is an arm somewhere that's straight enough for you to snake under it and back over the top of it and locking it off against your neck and your own your own wrapping action. If you can find that, uh, you can pretty much do the play, okay? The third play is what happens when they start to bend their arm, and we'll probably cover that another time. He's going to start bending the arm, okay? And you know what happens from here. I can't do that play anymore, so immediately my brain goes, that ain't going to work. But I've trained this, I know what I'm doing, I know that one option at least is to come forward like with an arm. The other thing as well is um, if the opponent starts to grab a hold of you with their second hand, it can stop you from making the turn, okay? So uh, again, without a partner, super hard to describe. But if I, if I come underneath and I start wrapping that and they start using their, in this case, left hand to stop me rotating or to pull me close, I can't do this play anymore, okay? So then what I need to do is find something like fifth play, for example. So it's also important to just think that it's one unarmed system um, and you pick up the plays from different positions and different things that might have failed, okay? So it's, it's, I'm throwing a lot at it. People ask me to speed up the stuff in the videos. So, um, you know, perhaps this is too quick, but, but there you go. So it's important to practice. And as I say, you can practice that from all over the place. Super important. Okay, let's look at the next play we want to do today. We number it as the 10th play, but Fury calls it Gambarola. The reason why he calls it Gambarola is because it's a gamble, okay? We, in modern terms, we would call this, for example, a thigh throw. And in fact, for our primoris, we do practice thigh throwing. How you get there is, is, again, very dynamic and you can get there in lots of different ways. But effectively, what's happened is you've come forward to throw your opponent using, using your leg, your thigh, okay? Um, and the reason why it's called Gambarola is because if we're both grappling or we've struck into the grapple or whatever, and their right leg is forward, I'm going to be stepping with my right leg behind their right leg, okay? So if my opponent's me, <laughs> their right leg is forward, 
okay, I'm gonna be throwing them backwards this way with the gamble roller, which means that I needed to have stepped in behind their leg to throw them over, okay? And it's a gamble roller because as soon as my foot lands so that I can throw them, they are in exactly the same position to throw me, okay? Which means to execute this throw well, I need to embody the traits of the Segno, okay? I need to be brave, fast, aggressive, and stable, okay? Amongst other things. So it's only a gamble if I'm slower than my opponent, if I'm not being bold and using my strength, etc., etc. In principle, as long as I do everything that Fury tells me to do and stepping in and making the turn, I should get that throw, okay? And again, this can happen from lots of different setups and positions, etc. The main thing is that if my opponent's right foot's forward, I need to be coming forward with my right foot. And if their left foot is forward, I need to be coming with my left foot, okay? And where I grab them is, again, a very dynamic. Quite often, it's a high-low grab into this, okay? Where you... Again, for our Primoris members, we practice all of our throws in isolation. Um, but uh, the main thing about this is the fact that when I land with my foot, I'm doing the throw with a Volta Stabile, a stable turn, okay? So I'm stepping forward, okay? But I'm not, I'm not um, sweeping with the leg, okay? I'm not trying to sweep the leg. I'm trying to land and turn them over with my hips, okay? Straighten out my leg. The reason why I do that is because if I put period shoes on and I try a sweeping type action, I'm probably going to go on the floor myself, okay? Amongst other things, but that's, that's a very important reason. So as I've, as I've stepped in to do that, Gambarola, I'm keeping my feet on the floor. Once that foot has landed, it stays there. And what's giving me the throw is the turn and the extension of my leg, my knee, okay? Quite often, I, 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 I might be able to find a clip. If I can, I'll, I'll, I'll include it on this. But quite often what gives me the throw, okay, is the fact that I'm straightening out my knee, I'm stepping down with my heel, to basically give them a little nudge behind their own knee, okay? It's super hard to describe. I'm pretty sure we've got it on a video, so I'll, I'll include it on this. And I see a leg, there it goes in, right? The main point about the way we do a thigh throw is that it's not sweep. It's not doing that. Sweep can work, but you see how unstable, actually that's a great example how unstable I was when I did that sweep. You're keeping your foot grounded. So you're stepping through, leaving the hip up, we're back knee to knee. So this, that's what starts the throw. And this just helps. Yeah, so now if I, look, I'm going to put the angle into it, but now if I put it all together, I step through and I straighten the leg as I bring it down. And I want to bring it down nice and controlled right in front of me, because obviously I can do stuff with this arm. Now with Fiori, we don't go to ground, of course, but I can bang, bang, bang. But again, we could be body to body. I've stepped through, okay, and it's the putting the heel down and straightening the leg with the turn that gives me the throw. Now, from a combative perspective, once I'm throwing my opponent, I want them to land somewhere predictable, okay? I don't just want to come in and throw them over, okay? I want to keep control of them because throwing them on the ground is not enough, okay? And contextually, I want to make sure they don't get back up again. With that in mind, as I've grabbed them, as I've come in, as I've stepped the heel down and brought them over, I bring them this way, okay? I want my op opponent to fall here to ground, bosh, so that I can pick up an arm, I can break an arm, I can, you know, I can strike them again, I can hit them on the ground. I want them to fall somewhere that I can control, okay? That's a super important thing to remember as well. So, we're stepping forward, heel up, knee bent, twisting and turning, straightening out that leg, kicking the heel down, and I'm pulling them over, okay? And I'm, I'm throwing them right here. Both legs, uh, you can practice with both legs, both legs coming forward. So it's a little bit more clunky with the left side if you're right-handed, uh, but it's the same principle. So we could be, could be grappling, whatever. I've come forward with my left foot, if their left foot is forward, and I've basically done the turn with the straightening out of the leg and putting the heel down. So that is Gambarola, okay? Um, again, pause it, have a practice, whatever you want to do. Um, and I, as I say, I'll try and find that clip of me doing this against uh, an actual opponent in training. Okay, so those are the two arm bits I wanted to cover today. Um, I, I really hope that you will let me know if the unarmed stuff works on video or if it's kind of irrelevant and you don't want to see any unarmed. People have asked for more unarmed, but 
it's super hard about a partner so do do just let me know if it works or if it doesn't work your feedback is really super important to all of this next what we'll do um, is some close plays some Jocko stretto plays with that uh, with sword and two hands so let's get cracking on with that okay a couple of plays from Jocko stretto are close plays with two hands so uh, with sword and two hands so the, the first play in the Jocko Stretto we can probably skip past, but effectively the right foot has come forward and, um, and you're starting to get a lot closer to your opponent initially than you were in the Largo. Okay, remember, uh, I'll repeat a lot if it's important, but it's, it's shown right foot forward because of how the fight is likely to have unfolded. Okay, my opponent's probably started on their right side. I probably started on my right side because we're both right-handed, okay? And you don't, you generally don't start a sword fight in distance, okay? So there's, there's a lot to it. Um, but the right foot has come forward and I'm meeting mezzo spada to mezzo spada, so to meet the middle of their sword to the middle of mine. What's given me that is distance, okay? If I've come forward, either with a defensive action or a cutting action of my own or, or indeed a thrust and my opponent has started further away they might have come into distance okay but i might have covered punta to punta because we were further away if you take these two exact images and move them back what you'll find is the crossing starts to drift higher onto the weapon okay what i'm trying to say is in the illustration is mezza to mezza it doesn't mean if i've stepped forward right foot and they've come forward as well it doesn't mean that just because the crossings happen on the punta i'm not in stretto okay and that's super important all right the first play we're going to do is what we number as the second play the first action we're going to do is this action here okay where i'm basically going to reach forward with my left hand and take a hold of my opponent's weapon in the middle of the pommel now we've done a video on this in the past and so i'll quickly throw that video in now you meet whatever you meet in crusada stretto all the time okay this is stretto in crusada so the second play which is the first technique that we'll do fiori describes reaching over the arms and taking a hold of the middle of his hilt, okay? And the image shows the left foot forward and the sword down towards the right hip. Okay, so having seen that, uh, we're gonna walk through this um, again, basically. Now there's a couple of important things to note, okay? My sword arm, my right arm, comes on to my right hip, okay? So even though I've met here, I'm basically reaching over with my left hand and I'm bringing my sword arm onto my right hip with the left foot coming forward again because I need to make up the distance to make the hold. From here, you'll see, if I was to have reached forward with the left arm, they're too far away to grab a hold of it, so I need to come forward again. The other thing that often confuses people is that in this image, the and this is a redraw, but it's an accurate redraw, the weapon is looks like it's on the left side of my opponent's right arm. This is done purely so we can see what's going on here. In reality, my sword is crossed on their the left and it stays crossed on the left. There's quite I've seen interpretations where people have tried to figure out how the sword finds itself to the outside of the opponent. The answer in my view and in our view over the last 25, 30 odd years is the fact that don't pay too much attention to that. It's a bit of artistic license, shall we say. There's no real practical way of getting the weapon to the outside of their outside of their arms like that. Not 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 under pressure and it's just not necessary so let's work through that play that's not a gripe by the way sorry that's an that's an explanation so grabbing my weapon okay uh let's for argument's sake let's start from from posse de donna actually let's start from uh, our guard okay posse de donna as, as a guard rather than the actual poster so we're here okay opponent has cut into me i've made a cover with a step forward or i've cut into my opponent with a step forward as well so okay so breaking with the tradition of largo apologies so breaking with the tradition of largo uh, I, I'm, I'm i'm now stepping into my opponent with my own action either as i say either a cover or a cut okay right foot's coming forward and we've met in crisada met spada to met spada okay what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to make a step with my left foot and as I do that, reach over to take a hold of my opponent's pommel. It says in the middle of their, in the middle of their grip here, right there. So if it's a long-handled weapon, I'm going to grab a hold right in the middle of their, their, um, their handle, basically, their, 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 their pommel. Uh, sorry, not their pommel, their hilt. <laughs> uh, the car really put me off. Uh, and as I do that, with a step, I'm going to bring this weapon down to my right hip. Okay, um, and now here's the thing about 
sword work with Fiori, but specifically Jocko Stretto, the close stuff. You'll know from any sparring you do, it's very clunky, very messy. When you start closing, it gets very messy. It's important to bear this in mind with any kind of play, close range play like this. It's probably not going to unfold the way you think it is, okay? What I mean by that is we have to train lots of different options with all of our plays because what you find at the end of an arm might not be what you expect. So as I've cut in and reached over, I could very well be grabbing hold of my opponent's strong, okay? Or I could very well be grabbing hold of my opponent's pommel. Quite often there's a different play to explore if you do that. But the main point of what I'm saying in this instance is I've made my cover and I've decided their hands are right here, okay? So I could have been slightly over to the left of my body. They may have been a bit offset with their own action, which means it's there. Their, their hands are right there to be, to be grabbed, basically. I'll throw my hand forward with the step and I'll grab a hold of whatever I can. Okay, whether it's the strong, the pommel, the middle of the sword, ideally I'm doing what Fury tells me to do, which is to grab hold of the middle of their handle, but it's not gonna stop me from doing the play. Okay, and it, this is why pressure testing and different setups and a lot of exploration into what can unfold is really important, okay? So I'm in, I'm grabbing with the step and I'm pulling the sword onto my right hip. Now, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm doing that, okay, all is one action, what I'm looking to do is hold them there just long enough to get my point back into the middle of my body, which is why it's really important to pull it onto the right hip. You will see um, interpretations where people try and leave the sword on their left hip. Certainly in the past, I'm not sure if people still do that, but it's important to explore because it's a temptation. So you'll see examples where people reach over and they try and do this kind of action. That action will not bring your point online the way you need it to. Also, uh, it's across my body, it's not what the manuscript shows, and as soon as my opponent realises I've grabbed a hold of their handle and started stepping forward, okay, they're going to instinctively try and bring their arms up, which takes all of this offline, takes my point completely offline. So it's not a practical way to explore this kind of um, technique where you're closing distance, grabbing a hold and bringing your point online. It's, it, it's, it, it doesn't have a very high success rate. And again, it's not what the manuscript shows. So I'm here, okay, whether I'm in uh, Posse de Donna or, or, or whatever, okay, I've, I've come forward, I'm making that grab and I'm dropping everything onto the right hip, which gives me all of this to thrust with, okay? I don't have to thrust, I can place the point and step again to push on it or whatever. But that's the play right there, okay? Offline, cut forward in this instance, reaching forward, pulling everything down, and that's a nice, smooth, fluid action. The other thing to bear in mind with stretto is in my view, people do it way too gently, okay? Way, way, way too gently. We've got to think of the context of this system. We're probably both armored now, okay? So in reality, whatever I find on the end of my point is probably not going to be a fight ender. So we have to think about the situation as it unfolds. I mean, I've grabbed the hold, I've stepped through. That is gonna hit a breastplate, okay? So I may lean on the point, but I may need another option. Lift the visor, stick it in, or, uh, you know, grab a hold of it, find an armpit or whatever. But if you practice it aggressively and smoothly, what you'll find is you completely dominate the center line, okay? It takes your opponent ages to recover their weapon, okay? And at that point, you've got loads of stuff open to you. So just, you know, a bit of a sort of mentality piece, but it's important to bear in mind the context of an action like this where you're aggressively closing into your opponent, okay? It's, it's, uh, it's important to train follow-on options as well, and you should definitely should do that. Um, as I say, armpits, under the, under the um, helmet, in the visor, um, whatever. Practice those plays and, and variations of, of different, um, different options. So that's... Uh, the sort of first action, if you like, uh, the first technique, if you like, um, of, uh, of uh, Jocko Stretto. Okay, we're in, we're reaching over and pulling everything down to the right hip. Okay, the left foot's come forward. Sorry, so you can see the left foot's come forward. There's my thrust on if they're unarmored, and if they're not, well then you practice different options, uh, um, as I say. Okay, the next play of the uh, Jocko Stretto is 
this one here, as we number them, the third play, okay? So uh, the arms have been stopped low, okay? Um, it comes from the cross, he says here, this is another play that comes from the cross of my master. So here's the master with the crown on. Um, and what you're doing is you're striking to the face with the with the pommel as you control the arms. Now, the important thing about this is that you're you're controlling the arms no matter where you find them. Okay, again, we train for perfect, but it very rarely comes across like that. So I've made the cross from my from the master. Okay, so the right foot has come forward. I've either again cut at my opponent or they have cut at me, and I've made a cover. In this case, let's say. Uh, frontally with my right leg coming forward okay so either way I've made an action up here either a cut or a defense okay from here what I need to do because their arms are a little bit higher is I need to control them wherever I find them and I need to make space to come offline with my left foot to send the pommel forward in crusada, it can be high it can be low it doesn't matter we're meeting in crusada, okay the left foot comes forward check the arms here you always show in the Getty at least a thumb on the top of the arms and I'm, like, I'm doing this. This is the play, okay? I'm coming to his right on my left, okay? Uh, and here, I'm just doing this, okay? Now, his arms are a little bit high there, it doesn't matter. All I need to do is stop them from coming up long enough for me to hit him in the head. You can do whatever he wants after this. And of course, from here, there are other options to move into, okay? It's important, so I say it again, uh, you must learn to control the arms no matter where you find them because sometimes the arms will be quite high, sometimes they'll be a little bit lower. The reason why the thumb comes over is to give you a lot more control. You've got a lot more strength pushing down like this uh, than you do with the, with the fingers up, if you like. But the other important aspect is where you're collecting the arm from, okay? so. I've cut in here, let's say for example it's, it's a sort of cover type position, I'm basically just looking to push my arm forward and down and if their arm is high then I'm going to catch it here, if their arm is a, a bit lower I'm going to catch it here but the action is the same, I'm basically just stepping forward and I'll collect the arm wherever we make contact. I'm doing that just long enough to send this pommel straight forward, okay? Again, I think people do that way too gently most of the time, although it's obviously really hard to practice um, aggressively with this. If people wear, well, I mean, I don't, but if people wear, I have a different mask, but if people wear fencing masks, what you'll find is if you put too much power into the pommel strike, because the mask sits against the head quite snugly, you can be a bit unkind to your, to your training partner. So obviously you do need to be kind, um, but, um, but in reality, you would really be smashing that, smashing that pommel forward. Okay, um, in this instance, it's a straight pommel strike like this to the to the head. Um, in this instance, there's another play where it's a slightly different mechanic. But sorry, I'm talking too much on it. Anyway, uh, so we're here striking. I'm stepping with the left foot, collecting the arm wherever I find it, and I'm just sticking this pommel forward. Now, that is not going to end things. Okay, um, armoured. Uh, it's definitely not going to do anything to your opponent aside from create another opening. If they're unarmoured, well then catching a pommel in the head is going to be, um, you know, a pretty hard thing to swallow, but you can't assume it's going to end the fight. You also can't assume that you're going to land with the contact that you really want to, i.e. it's going to be hard enough, okay? So again, you must practice follow-on actions and there's absolutely loads to choose from. Cut in, collecting the arm, stepping forward, okay? Uh, that pommel strike, as I say, if they're armoured, it's not going to do anything, okay? But from here, I've got other options. I can roll the sword back over, come around the back, whatever, okay? The option that's the easiest one to explore is just to drop that pommel strike straight back into a single, uh, sort of single-timed fendente. So, excuse me. <laughs> Wait for some cyclists to go past now. As I said in my last video, the road is really far away, it's just so quiet. You can hear everything, so I do apologize. Okay, so um, it's just to turn it into a cut. So I'm collecting the arm with a step forward, I'm striking with the pommel, put the hand back on the thing, and just cut straight back down the line, either with a step back or just staying completely static, okay? It's a very easy, quick transition to make. You've softened up your opponent and you've struck back down with your fendente. So you're moving around, I'm here, bang. You're literally giving him a face full of pommel. Okay, what I, what I do from here is up, is up to me, totally up to me. Here, 
collect the arm strike just straight back down the line. If they're armoured, well, you've got both hands higher. So what can we do with that? So offline and pin, okay? We've made our Metsa Spider, Metsa Spider cover with the right leg coming forward. Um, I'm going to collect the arm step, strike with it. If they're armoured, I'm going to lift up the visor, turn the sword and stick it down their neck. No problem. If I don't get any purchase, i.e. If, if that visor is locked down, okay, I've got other options too. Uh, a really good one that I like, that I saw once, uh, that's probably worth, I've just literally thought of this again, is to, ball cyclist, is to bring the weapon down into the top of the breastplate, uh, which I, I just literally thought about again as I was doing that action. So it's to come offline, strike, clearing the line with a pommel strike, turning the sword and just sticking it down the top of the breastplate. So just angling it down. The point I'm trying to make is that you stick it wherever you can. If they're armoured, you stick it wherever you can. Uh, you can follow onto it, lean onto it, bring the weapon down low again, work for an armpit, whatever. Um, but again, super hard to simulate on my own, but it's important with all of these plays, with all the plays in the registry, you practice different setups, different options, and also what happens if you fail, okay? Because that's now building a martial art, okay? It's more than just a bunch of techniques. So that's the next action of the Jocko Stretto. Uh, let's do one more Jocko Stretto action and just see how this one comes across um, on film. But let's try this play. Uh, it's a little bit, little bit of a difference, I suppose. Um, so it's not very often we talk about what happens if the, uh, you're making uh, cuts from the left, okay? Or if your opponent is covering uh, from their left, okay? So Fiora has some plays that deal with this. Uh, as we number it, the 11th play of the Jocko Stretto, uh, where basically he's saying, if one covers on the left side, catch his left hand with your left hand with, uh, with all the pommel of his sword, and you can put it down behind him, and with thrust and slice you can strike him well. So it, let's explore that. But he's got a couple of different options here. This is another good one as well, uh, if they've covered on the left-hand side. Um, take a look at the manuscript anyway, but they're in there. I thought we'd do this, um, again, because it's not very often we talk about what happens if people covering on the left side of their body. We'd both probably be right-handed. Um, we will have to, at some point, commit to video our thoughts on being a left-handed combatant of the period. Um, but let's just say that there's a very high likelihood that you'd both be right-handed, um, regardless of your preference for using the left hand for other things. Um, so what's happened here is I'm still in stretto, because my, but my left foot is coming forward. Even though I'm making an attack for my left, they've covered on their left. And let's say I've done a finente for my left, they've covered from their left, okay? Even though I've committed to the first action with my left foot, I'm still in stretto. Okay, because the lager has a left, plate, left, left foot out a lot, but I've cut in with the step of my left foot, and it's distance that's given me the stretto. Okay, so just to, just to cover that point again. So my opponent has covered from their left, okay? They might have their right foot forward, but in either case, they've come forward with their left uh, from their left, or they might have actually come forward with their left foot as well. Doesn't matter, okay? The point is, it's happening on that side of the body. So I've made this cut or thrust, but cutting action from my left. They have made a cover from their left, okay? What I'm going to do from here is from what would be a very close, probably almost strong to strong in Crusader, um, I'm going to basically take hold of their pommel. So I'm going to come right down low and I'm basically just gonna lift the weapon up, okay? This is, when you start getting really close, this is a super, applicable play to use in lots of different ways okay you can pick this up from a thrust if they're thrusting from their left and you're covering from your left i.e exchange um, you can do it from a middle cut from your opponent that you've covered in posta frontale for example from here you can find it in lots of different ways so it's a principle that's definitely worth a lot of practice when you you know if you're not training at the moment when you get back to your club or to a class of ours um, it's definitely something to practice a lot so uh, in this instance, I've cut in, they've made their cover. We're strong to strong, or certainly very close. I can increase again if I need to make up the distance, but I'm basically just lifting their pommel and pulling on my own thrust, okay? And he says from here, with thrust and slice. So I can thrust, or I can cut, whatever. I can do a lot of different actions from there. This is a good play to throw in because it shows some of the subtleties and sometimes some of the finesse, even though it's tempting to think of this stuff 
and I always say it should be aggressive and very, you know, you could expect it to be a bit of a mess and a bit clunky. There is still quite a lot of finesse that can be, uh, that can be uh, applied, if you like, to a lot of this as opposed to just bang them and bash them, you know. So we're in, left foot's coming forward. Again, I could have met high, low, could be a cover, could be a, could be a cut of my own. Strong to strong, and grab hold of that, lift it up and, and just pull on my point, okay? Armoured, unarmoured, doesn't matter. So, you know, again, pause it, have a practice at that. Um, even from a high, high posture, you know, posture de on the other side. Cutting in, grabbing a hold, lifting up. Super fast, super aggressive, but a lot of control. A lot of control required. And in that instance, you can bring the weapon high. You can just send it straight into a, straight into a cut as well. So as opposed to... Um, bringing on just the point, I can lift it up and just destroy the legs as per other plays. Lots of different options from there. But once you uh, practice that play uh, for a period of time, you start to actually see it happen quite a lot. And you can see, oh yeah, you can apply this play quite a lot. So uh, that's the plays of the Strato for today. Okay, so again, uh, from the first bunch of instructionals to these, to this one and the, and the one I've done previously, uh, so five and six, uh, I've tried to pick up the pace a little bit, okay? I've um, tried to throw a little bit more theory into stuff because that's what people have asked for. Um, and I've also tried to take up a little bit um, the assumed level of knowledge. So the first bunch of instructionals, I was assuming that people uh, were potentially watching Fury-based stuff for the first time. Uh, the feedback I've had is, you know what, Mark, we know the basics. Of course you do. Uh, so can you give us the same sort of content, but with a little bit more um, uh, sort of intermediate to advanced uh, things thrown in as well. So hopefully it's a good, it's a good mixture. It's, it, you found it to be a good mixture. Um, so that's all I have for today. Um, thank you for your time. Please let me have your feedback. It's super important. And until the next one.